The time is now 5.30 p.m. We will now close this regular public meeting of the Board of Trustees of Humble, I'm sorry, we will now call this regular public meeting of the Board of Trustees of Humble Independent School District to order. Item A, a closed session of the board will now be held on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting should the board determine that any final action, final decision of, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote will be made upon reconvening of this public meeting in open session. The time is now 5.31 p.m. We'll now reconvene to our public meeting. Uh, time is now 7.04. Thank you for joining us tonight. A reminder that the meetings of the board are open to the public, but are not meeting of the public. The Humble ISD Board of Trustees meet monthly in a regular meeting to receive reports from staff and take action from recommendations of the superintendent. The board receives the agenda and all supporting documentation several days in advance of the regular meetings, which allows us to ask and receive, uh, ask questions and receive answers to those questions in advance of the regular meeting. Therefore, lengthy discussions are not always necessary on every agenda item. But as a board, we do have the appropriate knowledge and preparation for responses regarding the content of the meeting tonight. There are students and other guests present. To, main, to maintain decorum, respectful behavior is expected. Disruptive behavior and or comments will not be allowed. And with that, our first item, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of, America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one, and indivisible. And now if you just join me in a moment of prayer. Thank you. Okay. Moving to our next agenda item. is commendations and recognitions. Dr. Fagan, can you please introduce tonight's inspiring moment? Absolutely, good evening everyone, thanks for being here. Um, on June 27th, Humble ISD launched a brand new website. This was the biggest change made to our website platform in over a decade. Tonight's inspiring moment offers a user's guide to that brand new website. Humble ISD is starting off the school year with a new website. If you haven't seen it yet, you should give it a look. It's beautiful. Go ahead, try it out. You may notice that this new design works optimally with whatever platform you use. Mobile device? Check. Tablet? Yep. Computer-based web browser? Absolutely. I know change can be difficult, especially when you can't find what you're looking for. Which brings us to our word of the day. Trepidation. A feeling of fear or agitation about something. So, to help ease the trepidation, let's go over a few tips on how to navigate the new site. A good starting point is right at the top of the page. First, the menu button. This is your key to navigating where you want to go, all arranged by topic. You'll notice the Our District section contains links to alumni, our Board of Trustees, enrollment, and more. The Students and Families section, as the name would suggest, has all the information our students and families might need, such as counseling and behavioral services, immunization requirements, transfers, transcripts, and much more. The Departments, Programs and Events, and Resources section have many of the other links most people will be looking for. The menu is a great starting point when looking for specific information. To exit the menu, click the X at the top right corner of the window. Now, scroll down a little past the big beautiful picture and past the button bar to find Live Feed. 
This is where you can catch quick, in-the-moment posts in a social media style without having to be on social media. Hey, while we're at it, let's check out the live feed on a campus website that will also give us the opportunity to see the next important button up top, schools. All the schools are listed in alphabetical order according to classification, elementary, middle, and high schools. Let's look at Centennial Elementary as an example. Notice the big picture here. Each campus has their own unique photo to represent their school. So scroll down and visit Live Feed, which is specific to each campus. Again, this will highlight campus activities. Scroll down a little further to find key campus information. Note, each campus website is set up in the same manner. Also notice the menu button on a campus page gives you links to campus specific information, like who the principals are and how to get involved with the parent teacher group. Back on the main website, you'll see a similar layout, but information is at the district level. Along with the live feed, the news section is a quick stop to keep track of all the great things going on in Humble ISD. Keep scrolling down to Explore Humble ISD for some more commonly requested information. And that's it. That's the new website in a nutshell. Let's recap. The menu button at the top is a great place to start searching for information you need, and the menu items listed change based on the current page you're on. The Schools button will help you navigate to a specific campus. Live Feed is active and displays current, quick-in-the-moment posts, and campus pages have campus-specific information. I hope this helps alleviate some of your trepidation. Tune in next time for our new word of the day, serenity, the state of being calm and peaceful. Thank you and happy browsing. What a great job, Jonathan. I mean, that was, that was very artful, very artfully done. I think the new website represents Umbel ISD really, really well. We know it will be a great source of information as families head back to school and throughout the school year. And I just want to take a minute to congratulate the public communications team. It, it looks easy to go from one website to another, but it's actually a very, very difficult thing to do. And the public communications team did this alongside of every other thing that they do all the time to bring us this new, innovative, sharp uh, website that represents all of us so well. So thank you, Jamie and Jonathan. Thank you to Yvonne and Lori. I don't know where, who all out was here, but I used to have a list. I didn't bring it. So all those people I emailed the other day, <laughs> thank you so much for all of your hard work. It, it, it really is a beautiful website. Thank you. Okay, last week I was notified that the Government Finance Officers Association has awarded Umbel ISD a Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This award was for our annual comprehensive financial report for the fiscal year that ended June 30th, 2022. Our published financial report was judged by an impartial panel. Umbel ISD has a long history of commitment to financial transparency. In fact, this is the 36th year that the district has been honored with the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence from the Government Finance Officers Association. There's a lot of work that goes into publishing a report, and I want to thank our Director of Accounting, Laura Hamm, for coordinating the publication. Our CFO, Billy Beatty, is here to present the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting to Umbel ISD, which we will commemorate with a photo. With a photo. Jonathan has so many different things he does. Yes.
Congratulations again to Mr. Beatty and his team. This concludes tonight's recognitions. Well, thank you, Dr. Fagan. And moving on now is our questions and comments by patrons or employees of the district or students uh, regarding items, uh, agenda items or any other matters. And I just want to just read this. Um, the next item that we have is the public comment. We encourage board uh, and comments from citizens of the district or from district employees. Anyone wishing to speak, either as an individual or as a representative of a group, may do so following the procedure outlined on the agenda. The board asks that comments pertain to public education issues and be no longer than three minutes. Copies of our district policies on public participation in meetings and filing complaints are available on the Umbalize the website. And the one speaker we have signed up for tonight is Miss Deanie Allen. Is she here? There she is. Hi, Deanie. <laughs> I'm a retired UMBL ISD teacher, reading specialist and dyslexia specialist, and I am just here to say something positive. I just want to say a thank you to every single one of our kindergarten to fifth grade teachers. Reading and math, every single one spent 100 hours with the Reading Academy. It's an online course, college level. They learned best practices, for reading instruction, so our children can be successful readers. They studied current reading research and brain research. To pass, they had to do two projects. One of the projects was to read a case study of a struggling reader, design a complete lesson for that particular struggling student that would guarantee success. Our K-5 teachers are fabulous. They create a safe place every day for all our students. And they attempt to put reading research and brain research into action in every class so all our kids can be successful. So I say hats off to every kindergarten to fifth grade teacher. Thank you so much for those uh, kind words of encouragement. We appreciate that very much. And now we'll move to uh, comments by individual board members. Uh, we'll, Mr. Sitton, would you like to start? I'll go to my left today. Uh, no comment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Holmes, who is joining us uh, on the, uh, from Los Angeles. <laughs> no, no comment, no comment. Okay. Ms. Dixon. No comment. Mr. Grabowski. No comment. Mr. Kirchhofer, you already told me no comment. Okay. <laughs> and Mrs. Parker. Congratulations, summer school graduates. <laughs> That's right. Well, and thank you. I'm, I'm glad you were able to be there with the, um, all of us. Uh, the rest of us were, um, uh, I think, out of town or otherwise unable to attend. Um, so thank you for representing the board at that um, event. And, Okay, and I, um, at this point, I will not add anything more to that. We have, um, just so you know, after this meeting's over, we'll be going back into a closed session and we'll announce publicly uh, because we have um, an evaluation to do this evening, as annual, an annual uh, thing that we do with our superintendent. Uh, so, Dr. Fagan, I will turn it to you for any comments you may have. Um, I'm just going to be brief and say that I think that we're all a little perplexed by the legislature. Um, and uh, it doesn't uh, look, it, actually it looks like we were really smart in the way that we did our budget and we'll be moving forward um, with a 3% general increase for all staff, $20 minimum for bus drivers. Um, I'm gonna forget some, Rick, but for $14.50 for special education paras and a district minimum of $12.50. <laughs> we can do super password together. Um, and so we're really proud of that, and uh, I'm very happy to say that we did that with a balanced budget. I know a lot of, of districts have been unable to do that, are using ESSER dollars and those kind of things, but um, given the fact that the legislature uh, was, was finished and really didn't see an increase for public education, um, we are pretty happy with the situation that we're in and excited to s support our staff next year um, and thankful that we are within our budget to do so. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fagan. Okay, and moving on to our next item, um, I, uh, update on board associations and committees. 
Uh, we'll just run through. First is advocacy committee. Nothing to report. Thank you. Uh, audit committee, uh, nothing to report there. Uh, building and planning committee, Mr. Sitton. Yeah, the only thing is uh, you're going to see uh, an item on the agenda. We did um, uh, RF, is an RFQ, RFP, whatever, RF, whatever. Uh, on our architects again, uh, we did that after the 2018 bond referendum. I uh, haven't done that since then, so uh, there's a new listing of, archi of architect pool, uh, and they're working on, I believe you're working on GCs next. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Because there were more listed in that item than just architects? Was that Architects general, and engineers. Ge engineer, general, con okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Um, next committee, uh, board and superintendent evaluation committee. Uh, Nothing to report. <laughs> nothing. Evaluation this evening. Yes. That's it. Okay. Finance committee. Um, nothing to report. We took a break after the last budget workshop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Education foundation. Mr. Kurt Chopper. Nothing to report. Okay. How about it? Uh, and Mr. Holmes, uh, Kingwood Super Neighborhood Council. Nothing to report. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to um, uh, number four action items from closed session. Uh, personnel recommendations. Item 4A, Mr. Sitton, do I have a motion? Yes, Mr. President, I move that the board approve the administration's personnel recommendations as presented in closed session with addendum. Second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor? Okay, passes 7-0. Next, moving to item five, and that is our consent agenda. So you'll have to bear with hearing me for a little bit because there's quite a number of these. Okay. Item A, approval of minutes for the regular board meeting held on Tuesday, June, June 13, 2023. That's consent. Item B, approval of minutes for the special board meeting held on Tuesday, June 29th, 2023. Thursday. What did I say, Tuesday? Oh, it's, it says, okay, yeah. Mrs. Martin had to, no, okay. Uh, Tuesday, it's Thursday, June 29th. Okay, consent. Approval of goods and professional services and non-construction services exceeding $50,000 in the aggregate or $25,000 individually. That's consent. Item D, bond fund transfers and amendments. That's consent. Item E, budgetary transfers and amendments. That's consent. Item F, 2023-24 construction and construction related purchases. That's consent. Tax refunds, item G. That's consent. Item H, board authorization of interlocal agreements. Consent. Item J, approval of RFP number, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Item I, approval of RFP number 2021-003R, supplies, equipment, and services for students with disabilities. It's consent. Item J, approval of RFP number 2021-005R, general merchandise. That's consent. Item K, approval of RFP 2021-006R, educational service consultants. That's a, a consent. Item L, approval of RFP number 2021 dash 007R dash 04, educational and curriculum subscriptions, internet and web data based access and software. That's consent. Item M, approval of RFP number 2021-009R, restaurant and catering services. Well, that's consent. Item N, approval of RFP number 2022-101, miscellaneous instructional materials. And that's consent. Item zero, uh, item O, 
Approval of RFP number 2023-102, Services, Repairs, Maintenance, Installation, District-wide. That's consent. Item P, Consideration of Architectural and Engineering Services. The one Mr. Sitton referred to. That's consent. Item Q, Deductive Change Order. Item R, District of Innovation Plan. That's consent. Item S, expedited waiver for the teacher data portal of the Texas Assessment Management System. That's consent. Item T, committee appointments. Item U, approval of the consent agenda. So Mr. Sitton, can you might please have that back in a motion on the consent agenda. Yes, Mr. President, I move to approve consent agenda items 5A through 5T. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Dixon seconds. Okay. All those in favor? Mr. Strong's? Okay. Passes. Okay, next. Um, you know, there are no action items on tonight's agenda, so we will move to uh, item seven on the on the agenda, information items. Um, Mr. Perkins? There are no uh, intruder audits to report since our last board meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, and this one, uh, item 7B, it's a Board of Trustees continuing education announcement update. Um, I just wanted just to set the record uh, to correct something we did in a previous meeting. It was uh, really an oversight. Uh, it recently came to the administration's attention that there was a clerical typo on the continuing education training report that was provided to the board at the April 11th, 2023 meeting. At the time, uh, trustee Mr. Marcus Holmes had one training outstanding. He has since completed the training and all trustees are in compliance with the training requirements at this time. Uh, any questions or discussion from the board regarding this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll, we'll move on. The next item on the information um, Section of the agenda is item 7C, policy revisions, TASB update 121, and administrative recommendations. Any questions or discussions at this time, this will come back to a vote uh, the following, in the following month's meeting. So there'll be plenty of time if you haven't had a chance yet. But if you have any now that you'd like to propose or ask Dr. Fagan or, uh, or staff that she calls on. Okay, none. Uh, and then our last item under this um, section is item 7D, financial services report. This is our uh, monthly administrative item. Any questions from the board regarding anything contained in the package Mr. Uh, Beatty and his team have put together? You got off the hook again. Sorry. Okay, that, that's that. So. The time is now 727, and um, we are going to leave you at this time. You're very welcome to stay and wait for us to return from our closed session, but we will understand if you don't, and we will not be insulted. Uh, so, a closed session of the board will now be held on matters contained in the notice for this meeting. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in such closed session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote will be made upon reconvening of this public meeting in open session. The time is 7.27. We will now reconvene into open session. And I'll move to meeting closing. Uh, moving to our closing items, are there any topics for future board business that anyone would like to bring forward? Mr. Grabowski? Hey, I'd like to propose that next week uh, we discuss the pass-fail options in high school. Okay. Um, pass-fail options as they apply to our high schools? Just high, okay, yeah. uh, just the high schools. Um, well, I'd need to poll the board. Anybody oppose having that discussion at a future meeting? 
I'm not opposed, but it does seem like something more for a breakfast with the board than, but I'm not opposed to it. Okay. It doesn't matter to I me. Understand. Yeah, I, I, I we can't get into a discussion, but yeah, yeah you I, can ask a question. It's operations. Yeah, what, whatever. You okay? All right. We'll, we'll try to craft it. I just don't know how it would work. But a, a discussion yeah. item? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll also talk to Dr. Fagan about the best way to, to oppose that. Okay. Anything else that anybody has? No? Okay. I went through the... Oh, Mr. Holmes isn't on. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes didn't get back on, so... Yeah. Okay. You're okay with discussing? Okay. Three, four, five, six, okay. So six, and Mr. Holmes didn't come, wasn't able to come back on with us, so okay. All right, so no problem. Okay, so if there's nothing else, uh, the time is now 9.30 p.m., and this meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>